in this night session, we have uh, two talks. And the first talk uh, is uh, given by Professor Tsushu Wei. And so, so now he is going to tell us about AKLT state as information processing tensor network state and ground state of gap the Hamiltonian. So please start. Thank you. So uh, it's my great pleasure to be here. First, I would like to thank uh, Professor Takayanagi, Professor Okunishi, and Professor Tezuka for inviting me to this wonderful workshop. And I think it would be great if I could attend in person, but I certainly enjoy my last visit uh, to YATP. And I, I show you, uh, this is the picture of me standing in front of the Ukawa Hall. So today I'm gonna discuss with you several topics surrounding a Affleck Kennedy, uh, Leap Tasaki models. Uh, the title is shown here. I know this is a diverse audience. So my talk will be a mixture of review of all stuff and survey of some uh, recent development and combine uh, hopefully to, to make a coherent story. So I, I hope that everyone can get something out of this talk. Um, just as a remark, I don't know how much I could say about quantum extreme universe, but they are certainly um, contents from quantum formation and tensor network. So uh, I would uh, like to acknowledge uh, my collaborators on AKLT related subject over the years, in particular, uh, Robert Rosendorf for introducing me to uh, measurement-based quantum computation and Ian Affleck for educating me on AKLT and related condensed matter subjects. Uh, I want to credit my former graduate student who was mainly responsible for establishing the proof on the AKLT gap on various lattices. So let me, uh, like to begin with the uh, Ladif Schultz uh, Matty theorem and Haldane's conjecture, which are fundamental results in quantum spin chains. Consider, for example, uh, this. Heisenberg antiparametric spin chain with the periodic bounding condition. From LS theorem, it states that uh, for half R integers, for example, one half, three half, there exists an excited, an excited state with a vanishing energy with respect to the ground state. This means that uh, the system is either degenerate or gapless. However, uh, this theorem left out integer spin and how then, um, Conjecture that for integer spin, there exists a finite energy gap about the unique and disordered ground state. So I just want to remark that although by now people believe that this is correct, um, there's non zero gap in the integer uh, spin chains, but this has not yet uh, proven rigorously, although this, is, this, this should be the case, but uh, there's no rigorous proof. Hopefully somebody uh, will come up with a, a rigorous proof in the future, but this evidence is so strong. And um, this actually was the motivation that uh, Affleck, Kennedy, Leib and Tasaki constructed a related model that is similar or close to Heisenberg chain, but they could prove rigorously the gap. Um, but let me maybe first describe the construction of the ground state first. So on each side, you imagine there are two spin and a half particle or qubit. And the one on the right is entangled with the one on the next, the virtual qubit on the, on the next in the form of a singular state. For example, shown here, I use zero to represent it up and one to represent it down. And um, the math, uh, there is a mathematical mapping of the two qubits to their symmetric subspace that corresponding to the physical degree of freedom, a spin one system. So, yeah, so we can um, take a look of, of this and, and then see that if you construct a Hamiltonian, that is uh, of two sides, that is projector into a spin two subspace of the joint two sides, this Hamiltonian will annihilate 
the wave function that I just described constructed this way, and it's very easy to see that because by just by counting, the singlet doesn't contribute to total spin, and you only you're only left with a two virtual spin a half. So at most it could be spin one, and this projector into a joint spin two suspect would definitely annihilate this wave function. And if you expand uh, the projectors, they will look uh, it look like this. Heisenberg like, but with additional projected current. And AKLT show that this system is indeed gap, has a unique ground states, and this strongly support how dense uh, conjecture. And models like this, uh, now we call this in, in the how dense phase. And more recently, uh, this was recognized that it um, possessed the so-called symmetry protected topological order. So, namely that if you look at the, the degree of freedom at the boundary, it transforms uh, as a projected representation of uh, SO3 in this case. And it's also worth noting that uh, for a periodic spin chain, the ground state is unique, but if you cut the system open, then there are uh, four degenerate ground states. So maybe let me uh, say, if you have any question, just uh, stop me and, and I can answer immediately. Okay, so let me go to the next slide. So this shows uh, uh, various perspective of AKLT states and, and read the mo and, uh, uh, models. And um, this is certainly is not a complete list. But uh, this basically summarize what I'm going to talk about and cover today. So more specifically, this is the outline. I'm going to use the 1D spin chain, AKLD spin chain that I just introduced to explain uh, various of the aspects in this diagram. And then I will focus uh, more in two dimensions or three dimension on the quantum information processing of the AKLT state and the existence of the gap. And in, in these models, move to the next slide. So, as I said, I'm going to talk a lot about the 1D uh, AKLT state. And uh, the first thing connect to uh, the theme of this workshop is tensor network. So, you can easily see that this AKLT state can be represented in, in the form of a tensor network. And in this case, is it a matrix product state? So let me explain uh, in slightly more detail. We introduced the singular state and you can just write as a row uh, of a cat dot into a column of cat that give rise to the singular state. And I represented the projection from uh, the two virtual qubit to the physical screen as here. So if you look at this side, this is the one on the left, so on the left, of this spin, but it's the one on the right for the bond. So I take this column vector and this side here, I'll take the, the row vector and I write it in a matrix form. Now I apply this projection operator. So you can easily see that this acting on, for example, the one zero would, would map it to zero spin. And for example, this one one would map into a minus one. So you get here. So it is convenient just to write down the physical um, spin, physical index of the system and then the associated matrices. So I write it like CAD and, and matrix. So unfortunately the way that I'm writing it, uh, this form, um, the plus one is somehow associated with a sigma minus, but the minus one is associated with sigma plus. But you can actually change uh, the other way and not to get it, this is associated with plus and minus, but somehow I, I use this as a convention, but you can see it's indicated of the matrix product state and these represented the local matrices. And so if you contract all these matrices that give rise to the wave function, okay? And so, yeah, so this is what exactly what I said. Um, if you want to understand the, uh, the the diagram here, so each leg here representing a physical degree of freedom, it could be either plus one, minus one, or zero. And each has its own 
matrices, and then when you contract, multiply all these matrices, uh, if you have periodic boundary condition, you take the trace, and that give rise to the coefficient in front of that uh, physical configuration. So I want to mention that um, immediately here, we can see that there is some information processing capability of the matrix product states. You can imagine, a, 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 let's say a single one here, the matrix, depending on your measurement on the physical degree of freedom, you would um, get a matrix either plus sigma plus minus or sigma Z. And this indicate that there's an input here that get transformed to the output because of the matrix. And you could actually choose a different basis of measurement because uh, in a superposition and you, you see that um, you can actually get poly matrices because there are linear combination of sigma plus and sigma minus. So you already see that there is some information processing power using the matrix product states. Okay, so equipped with the tensor network description, uh, we can use it to discuss uh, various property of AKLT states. For example, you can ask, um, you can ask what is the magnetic ordering of the system? Uh, apparently, um, is now symmetry breaking, so we expect uh, it to show no magnetic ordering. And this was indeed the case, uh, AKLT calculated this uh, local observable to be zero, and they also show uh, exponential decaying correlation like this. But now if you have these matrix product state form, it's really easy to, to actually calculate because you just need to sandwich the observable into the MPS and its Hermitian conjugation, and that turns into a transfer matrix formulation. So you can use it to compute the local observable and correlation. And because this is a matrix box states with finite bound dimension, the bound dimension is two, because these poly matrices are two by two matrices. So um, you typically expect that the correlation length, uh, the finite correlation length. And there's an alternative way of uh, understanding why this is disorder. You can use um, merman wagner theorem, and you know that uh, they cannot break the rotation symmetry in low dimensions. Uh, I want to remark there is a useful formalism by, by this paper, Ahorvos, Auerbach, and Haldane. They use the coherent state wave function that, um, and turn that into a description of classical spin. And then you can also use the merman wagner theorem there. So, um, but I want to say that it looks like AKLT seems to be featureless in the magnetic ordering, but actually, if you look at the AKLT state defined on the beta lattice with coordination number larger than four or even three dimensional cubic lattice, they're actually near order. So um, this shows that one has to be careful in taking the thermodynamic limit when uh, calculating magnetic ordering. Okay, so next I want to um, examine uh, a Hinton nail order in the AKLD state, even though they, they, uh, it is not a physically symmetry breaking, but somehow if you look at the configuration of the AKLD state, their component, all the components are of this form. Um, at some point there is a plus state and uh, there are sandwich, uh, by a, a strings of zero, and then the next one could be a minus, and, and then the zero, and you never have a minus and then followed by some minus at some point. It would, you would have these alternating plus and minus one. And you can see from the matrix product representation because uh, a sigma minus times a sigma minus cell square is zero, so you can never have a plus one and followed by another plus one somewhere. And the sigma z basically just add uh, phases, could plus or minus one. So it does not uh, annihilate any of these matrices. So this suggests that if we remove all the zeros, somehow we get a, a, a nail state. So this uh, reveals the hidden antiparametric order of the system. So I bet I can make this more precisely by applying a mathematically a local projector 
PZ, which is only uh, fish out the plus and minus one subspace, when you apply this projector to the local tensor, it would simply annihilate this. So you're left with a local tensor of, of this form. And you immediately see that uh, you can only have two configuration and basically corresponding to the classical nail ordering of the state. And in fact, uh, this could be made more precise uh, as a well-defined order parameter. This is called string order parameter, the Nins and Romels in, in 89, that they construct this string order parameter. And <clears throat> let me describe this. So for example, at a site I, you have a S alpha operator, for example, here, uh, let's say it's in Z direction, so alpha corresponding the direction of spin. If you look at the Z direction, there's this plus one here, for example. And then this string is telling you how, what is the charge in between the next size. Suppose we look at here's minus sign, and there's no net charge here. So this would get a plus phase, but suppose your SJ is here, there's a plus sign, plus sign, but you count between there as a minus charge here. So they give it minus sign. So the over minus sign just to make the string order parameter to be positive. And you immediately see uh, actually using the matrix product states, you can easily compute this string order parameter. And you see that in all three direction, this is non-zero for the AKLD state. In fact, um, Kennedy and Tasaki show that um, this is equivalent to um, breaking up a Z2 cross Z2 symmetry. If you transform this, the AKLT to um, Hamiltonian to certain sort of Hamiltonian, uh, sort of via this uh, a non-local unitary, it, it, in fact, it can actually transform the strain order parameter that I showed here to be just a correlation of two spin. So this actually showed that this fact that these string order parameters are non-zero is equivalent to spontaneous symmetry breaking of a Z2 cross Z2 it's shown here. And it was um, realized by uh, Ashikawa that this non-local unitary can be um, simply expressed in this in this this very concise form. So so we talk about the, the nail order, um, but I want to switch um, to a uh, another order. This is called symmetry protected topological order. I also want to explain this um, in terms of, of the major product states. And this is actually related to the Hinden order that we just discussed. But with um, matrix product state, this to remind you, this, these, this is the tensor form that we constructed. These are physical spins, and these are associate matrices. If you choose a, a slightly different basis, I, as I indicated earlier, again, the superposition of plus one and minus one, and we label these by X, Y, Z, lowercase, and the corresponding matrices actually turn out to be the poly X, Y, Z matrices. So I use these capital letter to represent those matrices. And so if you consider the rotation by X, Y, or Z, 180 degree, these are representing the Z2 cross Z2 symmetry. And you can, you can see that under these transformation in the plus zero minus one basis, this is the, the rotation representation of the rotation. And in, in terms of these bases, it really just corresponding to the, my, uh, the X state basis state has an additional minus sign and Y has an additional Y. And in terms of the mis poly matrices, you immediately see that the only way to generate these minus signs are by these um, the poly Z matrices because they anti commute with the X and Y. So then the rotation around the X, it turns out that it generate these two minus sign and can be represented by a transformation on the local matrices by X operator. And so this actually has this way of viewing it. You apply some symmetry on the physical degree of freedom. 
And it actually turns out it's you can represent that action by uh, matrices applying to your virtual degree of freedom, or sometimes we call this bound degree of freedom. And V and V dagger in these cases are simply Z and X. And X, Z, and Y, these are projected representation of the Z2 cross Z2. And therefore, this is an indication of the 1D SPD order, according to Chengu and Wang, is a projected representation. And so if you have a, a long chain of these, uh, imagine you have a long chain, you have uh, another tensor, et cetera, and imagine it's infinite. And so you can see that these actions is actually representing a boundary spin, how it transform under the, the global symmetry. Yeah, so there's um, other way to, to view these SPD order. It turns out the uh, string order parameter actually is equivalent to detecting this uh, SPT. And yet, and I want to actually introduce another way of understanding the non-trivial SPT order. And this was proposed by you and collaborator. They proposed um, to you the so-called strange correlator. And you can see that um, if you have a state of your interest, for example, the AKLD state, and what you do is you take another trivial reference state, these representing the, uh, the trivial phase, and you calculate a two-point correlation like this. And you normalize by the inner product of the two states, and they call this strange correlator. And um, they argue uh, using a uh, formulation of nonlinear sigma model, description of the SPT phases, uh, they recognize that the trivial state is simply superposition of all the configuration without any topological turn. Uh, and um, the non-trivial state actually is one has additional on West Zumito Wheaton turn that somehow representing the entanglement. And the correlation function is of this expression. So I won't go into the detail, but what they argue is that um, using this picture, um, the strange correlator can be viewed as an, a space-time correlation function between a d-dimensional field theory with um, ZW turn. And so in 1D, this is a, a correlation of a single spin in the time direction. So it's already always long range. And in two, two dimension, uh, this strange correlator can be viewed as a space-time correlation function of a, a 1 plus 1D or for nonlinear sigma model with WZW turn. And they argue uh, this uh, has a power law correlation. So the upshot is that um, if you compute this correlation function, this is the state of your interest and this is state from the trivial phase. If you see that this is either approach to a constant or has a power law of decay, then you know there is a non-trivial SPT order. So in, in particular for the 1D AKLD states, you can easily compute this and you see that this is in, uh, a finite value. So therefore they conclude that uh, this SPT, this uh, AKLD state has a non-trivial SPT order. Of course, I want to play in the question and when we get to the 2D, what about the 2D model? Okay, so I talk about a few order and there is one last one that I want to mention. And what it is what we call the cluster order is related to the so-called cluster state in quantum computation. So let me um, describe a little bit more. So remember that we mentioned earlier, if you apply these local projectors, and you get these uh, local tensor, and uh, you get the nail state if you apply this everywhere. But because the AKLT state is a rotation symmetric, you can consider applying a projector at a different quantization axis, for example, the X axis. What if we apply these uh, projector to the local tensor everywhere? If we do that, the local tensor uh, if it is a simple calculation, you see that it's of very similar form. So I, there's a state, in this case it's minus one, has a local matrix associated with that, but it turns out to be just a transformation of 
what you started uh, in the Z basis. And the, uh, the associate plus one has also this. So in essence, if you apply the PX everywhere, you have also a nail state, but this is pointing in the X direction. It's in, well, and more precisely, it's a superposition of these two classical configurations. So these are sort of hidden nail order that I described earlier. But what if we um, place these projectors alternatively, like I put uh, PZ here, PX, PZ, PX, and you can immediately get the state by putting their matrix product state uh, representation on each side. And in fact, uh, you see, sorry, uh, in, in fact, you see that this corresponding to the matrix product description of the so-called classes state. So I don't have time to go to the detail of the classes state, but um, if you if you know it's matrix product state, you can you can identify that being a classes state. And the classes state is used in the one-way quantum computer by Rosendorf and Brigo. And they show that in, in this 1D, they can be used to um, implement any arbitrary one qubit gate. And if you go to the dimension, they can um, be used to perform universal quantum computation. Okay. So yeah, so I can describe a little bit more about uh, the gate. So as I said um, earlier, if we use these uh, bases, the matrix product state representation has these poly X, Y, Z. And if you have a, a few size uh, of these local spins and tensor like that, you can use measurement. So if I measure in this plus, uh, X, Y, Z basis, I either get X, capital X, Y, or Z, but I could imagine measuring in, um, in other bases as well, like slightly rotated to get some component of X and, and, and the other component of Y. You can imagine that you can actually uh, induce and get a arbitrary one qubit gate out of a sequence of this. And in fact, um, it was shown in this paper by Els and collaborator that they prove that in the entire Z2 cross Z2, SPD phase in the Haldane phase, the matrix product states at any point in the phase still has a similar uh, matrix product representation. So it's like uh, in the X state has an associated matrix that is of the form of poly X. However, the tensor product with an uh, arbitrary matrix that you cannot constrain. So and similarly for the Y and Z component. So pictorially, this is represented like this. You still have a protected two-dimensional subspace, and, but you have some arbitrary junk space. So in this paper, they conclude that in the entire Helden phase, you can actually have uh, the capability of performing teleportation in this protected subspace. Uh, however, um, arbitrary one qubit gate is really special to the AQLD point. However, later in, in 17, um, Stephen et al, they show that actually, if you are equipped with this, you can actually rotate and perform the measurement in a basis that slightly mix an X and Y or the other, uh, any other combination that you can actually use to uh, construct small rotation around arbitrary axes. So these uh, allow you actually to be able to perform arbitrary one qubit gate for the entire phase of how then. Yeah, so it has some kind of information processing power. So yeah, I so I talk a lot about the uh, features or property of the state. So I want to turn to how we uh, show that the model is gap. So the way to do that is you have these uh, AKLT Hamiltonian and you find a lower bounding Hamiltonian, which are constructed mainly by projector. So gamma is some constant re relating to the local gap. And this H tilde basically composed of one minus projectors. 
So as indicated here, the projector is project into, in this example, six sites here, and you have a neighboring projector that also project to six sites. And the way to prove that, this is one way to prove that, is to show that this Hamiltonian has a gap. And it turns out that to prove this in 1D is not that difficult. And one way to do that is you consider the uh, anti-commutator of these neighboring pro projectors. And if they overlap, you would have negative eigenvalues. So what you want to do is to bound these, uh, the, the negativity of the anti-commutator by the sum with uh, a negative number. And this eta is not negative. You want it to be as small as possible. If you can find a configuration of these projectors such that these eta, this overlapping parameter, which somehow is related to the angle between the two subspaces here and there. If you can show that one minus uh, Z is the coordination number. So this one has one neighbor here, another neighbor on the right hand side. So there are two. So if you have one minus two times eta in, in one D case, is greater than zero than the AKLT Hamilton is gap. So this is what the method uh, goes here. And you can just plug in the numerics and, and compute that. You see that if I only consider like a single site as a region, uh, actually two sides of region, and this, is, this does not allow us to show its gap. But if you have P equal to two, so you have uh, four sites in region one and four sites in the other region. You already get eta to be smaller than one half. So you can immediately show that gap. So that's one way to do that. So, I mean, AQT, uh, they use a different way. And there's also another approach by Connect. But this is the way that we are going to use in two dimension. So therefore, I introduce here. Okay, so this one is a technical slide, so I don't want to go into the detail of that. Uh, but you can ask, certainly ask me uh, later at the end. So we talk about the Hamiltonian is gap. And, and we can also ask the questions. Um, what if we deform the Hamiltonian slightly? So by deformation, what I mean is that you take a operator like this, um, it's diagonal in the Z basis plus, plus one minus one zero. And suppose, for example, you, you weight the plus one and minus one by a, a factor A. So locally you see the wave function component. If you see a plus one, you put an extra weight. You see minus one, you also put extra weight. If it's zero, you, you just put one. And that locally change the wave function. And you apply this to all the sites. And in terms of matrix product state, it's really easy to see how it gets transformed because it's simply just putting a factor in front of, of these matrices, the A, A here, and A here, and one here. And this was considered by Kumper and collaborator uh, quite early. And they wrote down a family of Hamiltonians such that um, the final, the, the resulting wave function by this deformation is a, a, a ground state. But I mean, we can write uh, an affected Hamiltonian in this way by taking, taking the inverse of this operator on the two sides and then uh, apply to this Hamiltonian, the local AKLT Hamiltonian. So you can easily see that this is still a ground state because this is the um, the deformation operator applied to all sides. And this is the weighted uh, uh, or deformed AKLT Hamiltonian. If you apply this to this wave function, the inverse cancel, right? So the inverse local deformation on neighboring two side cancel. And that locally is really the local wave function of AKLT state and the AKLT Hamiltonian locally annihilate that. So this indeed is a, a, a 
the so-called parent Hamiltonian, such that this deformed wave function is the ground state. So you can ask the question, um, then what is the phase diagram? Is there a phase transition? You might expect that to be because if I set A to be infinity and these two turn dominant, basically this is the projector that we applied earlier. So it would um, give rise to the nail state. So in fact, this is the, the phase diagram. Somehow when A is zero, this is not well-defined because then you cannot have an inverse. So I just put a circle here. In fact, if you calculate using uh, matrix product states, you found that um, in the entire, entire phase here, entire range of A except zero, the wave, fun uh, uh, the wave function has a finite correlation length, except at this infinity point. So this whole range of parameter is still the same as Haldane phase. And I want to mention there's another way of deforming and what's considered in this paper. So I, we could also ask the question, what about two dimension higher? So that's what I will do in, in the following. So maybe I want to pause here and see if any question, but I want to leave this picture that I cover the 1D AKLT state and model and talk about uh, various issue here. Um, if you have any question, you can, can raise your hand or, or just speak, speak out. Okay, if not, uh, so let me show you the two dimension, um, but I can really put the AKLT state on arbitrary lattice and each side has number of qubit corresponding to number of neighbors. For example, here you have three neighbors, so you have virtual three virtual qubit, and this is corresponding spin three halves physical entity, and this one is spin spin two, and this can be described uh, using a tensor network representation, and basically is represented by the anti-symmetric tensor between these singular bond and symmetric tensor that project to the physical spin subspace. So uh, before I talk about um, the information processing power and, and the gap, so I want to just briefly touch upon this question of SPD order. And in 1D, we use a projective representation so the edge to edge, but in 2D, you have to go to the, the so-called third cohomology group. And so projective representation is not sufficient to show the SPD order. It simply indicates that it has a weak SPD order, it may require translation invariant to protect that. And so, so it was um, believed that the honeycomb lattice seems to have a weak SPD order, um, while square lattice seems to be strong as be the order. Um, so I want to mention such a distinction mostly come from numerics. Um, and it's interesting that there is some connection to uh, how Dan's uh, another paper in two dimension where he analyzed uh, the uh, 2D square lattice Heisenberg model using an instanton approach to allow some tunneling uh, in, in the very phase. So he showed that the spin two, uh, one of the result of his analysis is that spin two AKLD state is an example of the disorder states with a unique ground state. Uh, in contrast to spin one half and spin one in his incidental analysis. And you could also do a similar analysis on the honeycomb lattice. It seemed to show that um, the spin three half AKLD state on the honeycomb lattice is also disordered in this way. So somehow from that analysis, um, it's hard to see why there is a distinction between the two, two states. And so I don't have a deeper understanding. So, but I want to show you the numerics that people have carried out and on um, computing the strange correlator. This we show earlier. So on the Spin three have a AKLT state. Uh, this was paper by this group. They sh show that the strange correlator decay exponentially. It's not polynomial. 
So therefore, it's, it doesn't have non-trivial SPD order. And in this group, they look at the spin two AQT on the square lattice, and they definitely see the power law decay. And therefore, the 2D AQD state on the square lattice uh, has a non-trivial SPD order. So I don't. I, I want to uh, leave this as a question: How can we understand uh, such a difference? Uh, is there any uh, any other intuition we can get? So I just leave it there, and then I want to talk about using the the rest of maybe five to ten minutes to just give you intuition of how we understand information processing power with two D AQD states and also the gap. So because I already set up the the ground work uh, in the 1D, so going to the 2D uh, is not that hard, at least conceptually. So to discuss the universal quantum computation on 2D AKLD state, the idea we have is to carve out these uh, hidden cluster order that I mentioned earlier. So in 1D, we use these alternating projectors, right? We use these alternating projectors mathematically to say that this would uh, fish out a cluster state. Somehow, if you uh, consider a physical process, this cannot be obtained deterministically. So you need to design some kind of measurement process. So what we use is the so-called generalized measurement. Uh, in a sense, if you send in a state uh, locally, uh, this so-called POVM would, would do the following things and would output um, an outcome indicating by the X, Y, Z. And if the outcome is X, Essentially, locally, there is a projector Px acting on the, the local wave function. If it's y, then it's, uh, the action is Py. If it's z, the action is Pz. So this would give you some random outcome xyz randomly, and you have no control. Uh, the outcome should obey the statistics coming from the AKOT wave function. And so here, example that I show here. It turns out because the hidden nail order, the two sides of these essentially is one side because this, this will be a nail order uh, state in or a superposition of that nail a state uh, in the Z direction. And this is Y direction. So essentially each side, you group these uh, antiferromagnetic domain into one. And in a way of looking at the cross grain, way that you see that this is actually still a one-dimensional cluster state. So in a sense, extending slightly what we have, the notion of hidden cluster order, uh, if you, you can design a physical process so that when after you perform that measurement, you actually get an effective one-dimensional cluster state. So that's the idea on um, one dimension. And it turns out on the honeycomb lattice, so I just remind you, this is the honeycomb lattice, and this is the mapping between the virtual qubit and the physical spin. So this is somehow a little bit technical to just write down these projectors, uh, but it's easy to understand. It's really projector into the maximal spin three half and minus three half component. So this is a two dimensional subspace. And as I said, it's rotation symmetry, so it's natural to consider other direction, X and Y. And it turns out this is the same as in 1D. So this is the same as in 1D that I showed here. And so the upshot is that we were going to apply this kind of a generalized measurement on all sides of the AKLT states. And I here show a, a representation of these outcomes, random outcomes uh, on the left, on the honeycomb lattice, on the right is this square octagon lattice. And we actually know uh, how each configuration uh, arrive in, in their probability distribution. It turns out this is a geometric uh, number, but in terms of uh, the connection to the cluster state or more general people call them graph state is that you look at the antiferromagnetic domain, and if they are the same type, you group them into one unit, and that form actually a local effective qubit. And then you just need to deal with the edge, 
the edge is that if initially uh, there were two connecting the neighboring domain, there were two edges, uh, because the property, specific property of the cluster state, the two edges actually is mod two, you have no edges. And in some other places, you might have three uh, edges connecting two domain, and you are left with one edge. So there's uh, some technical detail about how you treat the edges. So, but once you've done with that, um, you get a, a random graph, and this is representing the, the random graph state. And this can actually be com converted to a square lattice or honeycomb lattice if you want. But uh, the, up the, the upshot is that if you check its connectivity, so the way we do that is we look at each vertex and we try to remove that uh, with certain probability. So this is what we start with. And if you increase the, the probability of removing um, a side locally, you will see that there is a phase transition from supercritical to subcritical. This means that this random graph we got has a high connectivity. So this guarantee that you can use this to perform uh, universal quantum computation on this random graph, ran, random graph state. So let me just summarize on, on the computational power of these various AKLD states. So the state that I show on the left-hand side, we know it's universal, meaning that it can be used to perform quantum computation. But on the right, because of frustration, um, we do not know how to show it's possible. And so we conjecture that these are these AKLD state on the frustrated lattice are not, not useful for universal quantum computation. Okay. So this is the final, uh, almost the final topic. I want to talk about the existence of the gap in 2D. And so just to show you, this is the Hamiltonian. It looks complicated. And the reason we believe it has a gap is because um, Kennedy Lee Psaki showed that this correlation is actually bounded uh, exponentially. And it's in fact, actually our the chair of this session Professor Okunishi actually calculated the correlation length for the honeycomb and also the, the square lattice and it shows the final number. So I already indicated how we prove the gap is we sort of find a lower bounding Hamiltonian and we want to find overlapping regions and we want to compute the spectrum of the sum of their projectors. So I won't show you the detail um, of the derivation. It's, um, it's really taking the square of the lower bounding Hamiltonian and you, you will see there's an empty correlation, uh, empty commutator coming out and you turn that into the sum using that in, in inequality that I show and then that you immediately see that uh, if this number here is positive, then the Hamiltonian, the lower bounding Hamiltonian is gap and therefore the upper bounding, uh, the upper Hamiltonian, which is the AKLT Hamiltonian is gap. So I also don't want to go into the detail of these technical tensor network method. I would just want to show you the result on various lattices, uh, in particular the honeycomb lattice. Uh, for the overlapping region, if you naively count the dimension, this is the two to the 60 dimension. And we were able to use a tensor network method to reduce the dimension to two to the 26 that allow us to compute these eta value. And the way we construct it is that there are six neighbors of these um, regions. Let me just go back. This is, you have six of these because you have uh, six neighbors of these patches. So the the uh, requirement is that if you want to show the uh, its gap, you need to show that this eta is smaller than one over six. And we luckily found that this is indeed the case. So um, this AKLD Hamiltonian on the honeycomb lattice is indeed gap. And using the same method, we were able to also show um, various other degree three lattice and this decorated lattice uh, on the square also is gap. 
Yeah, so this was in um, 2020. And last year, we also extend the result to 3D. This is the diamond lattice with decoration of spin one. We also show that this is also gap. And um, at the moment, we cannot show that the square lattice is gap, but we constructed other spin two models and we show these, uh, these uh, AQT state out and the models are also gap. Okay. So I only probably have a few minutes left. I just um, quickly show that uh, deformation. So we already have done this in 1D. So really just locally give way to different spin components. In this case, this is the, the plus three hat, the minus three hat have, have a weight A over square root three. And at A equal to square root three, this is AKLT and you apply this deformation. And you can ask the phase diagram of this. And what we what um what we found is that um, there is a nail order on the right. If A is big, actually this was the original result by Nigerman and collaborator. And I think our chairman also studied this deformation. And at some point we thought uh, there was a transition to the XY phase, but it turns out that's not correct. Uh, because there is a large correlation and uh, when A gets small. So for this deformation model, there's only two phases. One is the AKLT of BBS and the other side is nil. I mean, this nil, you can understand why, because when this is really large, this is really the hidden nail order that I described in 1D. And it was also studied uh, by Dama one and collaborator that they know in this region up to the nail order from one to up to nail order. In this region, the AKLT, the form AKLT state is, is uh, a useful resource for quantum computation. So maybe I want to end with um, the final discussion on this. You could also consider this as we consider on the honeycomb lattice, spin three half. We could also consider the deformation on spin two and there are uh, zero plus minus one plus minus two. So there are two deformation parameters that we consider. And so I don't have time to go into the detail. Uh, Nigerman at all, they found that there is a nail uh, phase here separating the AKLT or the VBS phase. And what we found is that in, in fact, there is a, a gapless region of XY like phase. And there's a region that has a large correlation length. That actually, we thought this was the X, X, Y phase boundary, but it turns out it's actually smaller. So this is also the reason that we make some mistake in the deformed honeycomb lattice. Okay. So I think this serves as my summary diagram. So I talk uh, to you about various property of the AQD states and models, and I want to uh, conclude with some open questions, at least for me. So for example, the AKLT gap on the square lattice is not proved rigorously, uh, though we know it's, it's finite correlation. Um, this is one sort of overlapping scheme that we are considering, but um, it's the dimension is too high that we cannot perform numerics. And another question is, we have shown that um, AKLT states on honeycomb lattice and spin three hammer, and also the spin two on the square lattice is universal for quantum computation. But how can we generalize this to higher spin? There's some technical issue is these generalized measurement when you consider adding these POVM, they don't sum up to identity. Uh, another is, for example, we see the, uh, the AKLD state when you deform has an entire rich phase diagram. Can you do universal quantum computation um, in the entire AKLT how then phase? And I also have, at least for me, I don't have a good understanding, theoretical understanding of the SBT order 
for different AKLD state. Mostly the evidence comes from the mix. I would like to see a better theoretical understanding of this. So I feel there's some connection to uh, how dense uh, to the isomer paper, but I couldn't find out uh, anything deeper yet. So maybe I'll conclude with this slide and thank you very much for your attention. So thank you very much. Great talk, including a nice review of various aspects of AKT models. So now it's open for thank question you. or comment. Uh, so is there any question or comment? If you have, please directly unmute your microphone. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Suchi. It was very interesting. So there are many questions, but I'm also interested in this uh, SPT odor business. So you said that Honeycomb has only weak SPT odor while Square Lattice AKLT has strong SPT right. odor. But but uh, let me confirm, you didn't see any essential difference from your side by like, proving the existence of gap or by using this uh, measurement-based quantum computation, I, you didn't find any essential difference between square lattice and honeycomb AKLT, is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, so in the square lattice, there's a slight difference, uh, oh, cool. but that's a sort of technical mm -hmm. issue. Let me see if I can find that slide. In, when, when we talk about the measurement-based quantum computation, this, way of constructing the the generalized oh, measurement oh. Mm -hmm. i just naively take the the highest weight uh, three half minus three half and i want this to be a two-dimensional suspect i take these projector you can add them and for the three and three half they sum to identity proportional to identity this is sort of conservation of probability mm -hmm. so you either get x y or z there's nothing else in uh, spin two there are additional terms you need to add to complete that identity. Oh. But I think this is a technical issue. Mm. Uh, it's not related to SPD order, as mm -hmm. I can see. So, but then uh, quantum computational power essentially is the same. Okay. So, and but, then. Mm, yeah, can I, can but, I continue? Yes, yeah, sure. So, yeah. but the indication comes from the strange correlators. Yeah, so, right. Uh, but what about this third group cohomology? I, I, I think that even the square lattice AKLT does not have non-trivial third group cohomology. No, so you, no. so I can show you, for example, using the idea in 1D. Mm -hmm. um, if you apply sort of local symmetry action on the physical degree of freedom, so it should be close. If you apply that, right, like this, you can imagine in the honeycomb lattice, there are three virtual legs. Uh -huh. If you apply these uh, 180 degree rotation on this, and you will spit out um, virtual action on your virtual degree. Hmm. And it turns out in both the square lattice and the honeycomb lattice, it, it's, it's identically the, just like the okay. 1D. You, okay. you spit out X, Y, Z. Right. Okay. Uh, maybe up to something, oh. some other factors. Um, but for um, this honeycomb, it's not. Um, it's not a. I think the group uh, member is. Uh, I don't remember. I think even the physical action because the local spin three half is not SO three right. It's already SU two. The entity is already right. SU2. Right. And yeah, okay. even, even the rotation yeah. of the cell is not Z2 cross right, Z2. Right, 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 right. So it's actually. Yeah, and you, think, you have projective yeah. representation yeah. to begin with. So it's a difference. It's, but, it's, so it's somehow, there yeah. is a difference. It's, you already have a projective representation right, to begin with. Right, right. Yeah. But, but anyway, going back the to square, square lattice, yeah. the square lattice would have similar, but the square yeah. lattice is. A, it's SO3, right? right? The physical spin mm -hmm. is SO3. And, but you have these um, similar hmm. protective representation, but you don't see any um, third group cohomology. Okay. You, okay. So there is something other than the third group cohomology. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. I so, didn't yeah. know. So I've, yeah. 
I find this question interesting. Mm. I couldn't find a, a good resolution to that. Okay. And mostly yeah. from. Mm -hmm. yeah, Thank you. From, yeah, sure. Okay. Is there any other quick question? So the time is almost up. So can I ask a question? Yes, sure. I'm Ho Shu. So Hi. Mr. Chinson, yeah. thank you very much for your nice thank talk. You. And I have a question about your uh, deformation of 2D AKOT model discussed, I think, in page 35 or something. Okay. Can you go there? Yeah, I'll go there. And you showed uh, the phase diagram, right? So is the gap monotonically decreasing with A in the AKOT phase? This is a very interesting question. So we cannot determine the gap value. Yeah. But we only prove the AKOT point, but I, we're thinking it, the same technique could allow us to extend, but mm -hmm. we don't know how, how far we can extend. And we can bound the gap, lower bounding the gap, but we cannot give the precise value. But there are other ways to, give, to calculate the gap. Um, mm -hmm. Assuming there's a gap you can calculate. For example, you could apply an external field that we did using um, uh, PEPS uh, to apply an external field in the Hamiltonian and look at how the ground state energy bends. And it should be plateau. And for example, at the AKLT Hamiltonian it should be plateau for a region. Mm -hmm. And then when you start to bend, that plateau value indicating the gap. And we did not do a calculation like that, but I imagine that would be a way to do that. Yeah. So Actually, I'm wondering if this kind of deformation uh, helps to prove the presence of gap. For instance, uh, is the gap small around A equals zero? Is that right? So here it's not well defined because you have these inverse ah, ah, so when it's zero. Yeah, so yeah, that's not right. a well defined limit. Yeah. But you also need to worry, uh, be aware of what would be the normalization. Because mm -hmm. it could be arbitrary normalization. What would be the right way to compare Hamiltonian at different A? What would be the the right weight, like the yeah, coupling? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the right. right. So, yeah, by using some different normalization, you you can amplify the gap, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, we should move on to the next talk. So okay, let's thank you very much. Again.